Ja. Namaste. Namaste. I'm so happy to see you today. I'm so happy to actually, for the first time, to stand here. I and, can't hear you. Uh, for the first time to stand here okay, in Satsang okay. and, mm -hmm. and um, I want to declare um, this hostage situation for finished because my being has been longing, longing, longing to speak to you for so long and, and yeah. seemingly there was some mind holding me down and not coming with up every excuse to Yes. To not stand here, uh, yeah. but then mind can all only hold down the idea you have of yourself. It yes. cannot hold you down. Yes. Please hear this. You know, if you hear it deeply and you sit with it and you follow the simple um, pointers, you'll find that that is not true. That the, the, the mind cannot hold what you are down. But we don't believe or trust or fully know yet what we are. We are thinking that we are our culture or our you know, um, personal identity. And that the mind will hold down, for sure. That mode of identity, that can get possessed. Not your true self. You see, so when you say that this is that the mind is holding the beingness hostage or your sense of yes, of course, when we are not in our true state. And can I just say something about this also? That it has to. It is actually a blessing that the mind beats you up. Meaning, beats up the wrong idea you have of yourself. Because if it didn't do that. If it was all nice and soft and protective of your egoic identity, you would never wake up. Another way of looking at things. And everybody complained, my mind, <laughs> and uh, asking for prayers to save your ego. If you really listen to it, all the things, even the bitter, the bitter things, painful things, are really here to help the wise to wake up, you know? Because, as I, s <coughs> as I said before, this psychological play, it cannot intimidate your true self. It can only intimidate the identity that you are wearing, the idea you have presently of yourself. And we have tried many ideas of ourselves, and they are like old clothes we have left behind. We have tried myself also. We tried many things. They, they, none of them worked, and they had to thank God for changes. We had to outgrow them and give them up. If you travel in that mode, we're always you, there's going to be other identities we're waiting for you that you have not tried yet. And maybe one lifetime will not be enough. Maybe we are ourselves if we carry on like this in some way. You know, life is preparing another womb for you to be born in next time, to carry on your projections. It's true. We don't like to hear these things, of course. But I feel I can say this because there's such a wonderful way out of this delusion, actually, and everyone has been presented with it. You know, you needn't have a religious or a spiritual background. It is so natural, actually, that it, it need not even be classified as spiritual even. It is so natural. It's only a question of, well, perhaps it is our destiny. If we, are, if, we are, if we are destined to wear the garment of a certain particular discipline or religion or spiritual discipline or whatever, that's, that's fine for a time. We are, it's, it's, you're, on the, you're in the journey. But there comes a time when something, 
you know, wait a minute, you know, if the truth is, if the truth is true, it must be here now also. Then if it is now here now, how to discover it? If you are asking these kind of questions, then already the birth pains have begun for your your true birth, like giving birth to yourself somehow. It's not the most elegant language, but uh, you know what I mean. I, I feel very grateful to the mind, the mind, and it is seen that there never was any hostage or, or anybody who held me hostage, and and with this seeing, it came so much space and and. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm very, very, very happy about this. And <laughs> and um, you may be very, very happy as this. <laughs> yeah. Not just about yes. that. Yes. yes. Because mm. um, and it, it should not what you are discovering, if it is true, should not be an event. Or you know any kind of happening, and oh mm. wow, mm. since this you know it is it is before any event. And it's not you who is going to make it last. You will be absorbed in it. I say you, whatever ideas we hold about ourselves. Um, it's never the full truth, but we'll feel in our life that there is something so, so full and complete. Uh, probably many people don't feel like that. Your life feels fully complete in some sense. Yes, this is how I feel. Like I get absorbed more and more of mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit and. I'm just dissolving and everything is dropping and I don't do anything really. I just it just comes like that. I don't I can't explain. Why not just identify as the Holy Spirit? Than the one who is melting in it. If that's all that's gonna be left anyway. <laughs> Get there first. <laughs> yes, and the times when I wanted to come up I didn't have a question because I. Okay. I don't feel I have a problem. I, I you don't, don't feel you are. I have a problem. I don't have a <coughs> problem. I just, but I wanted to come up to to just express my gratitude. When you have an I, you have a problem. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry, but it's like that. Mm. If you if you feel you know you have an I I. Is there any content in your eye? In any particular kind of qualities about eye? And I know this may seem very strange. This is not something we'll talk about out in the street because most, of course it will sound ridiculous what people are talking about eye. But if you grasp my what I'm speaking, yes, when I yes, say I that did. the eye which is personal and unique and special and whatever it is, any kind of what is the substance when you say I? What does it contain? And if it is very particular and so and so and so about it, you see, then um, okay. Superficially, of course, we are going to still carry uh, the sense of uniqueness, of course, and there's nothing wrong with it. I don't find, you know, there's no need for me to say, you know. Uh, a rose and a daffodil are the same. There is no need. Why? I can enjoy the diversity. Why should I try and make them into... They are not one in their expression, they are one in essence. We are one in essence, and we are talking about the essence. In terms of our expression, we can be as diverse as, as, as God's creativity, but in essence we are one. And if if that feels um, uh, how can that be threatening if you have discovered it maybe as an idea the mind will still fight i don't want to be one with everybody i like being unique and whatever that's another story you who are discovering this are finding that 
from the mind's perspective, from the ego's perspective, going towards the heart, so to speak, feels like shutting down on your life. Whereas, in fact, remaining in the egoic identity is itself a claustrophobic state compared to that which is your natural state. Why should I have to be saying these things? You know them, don't you? They're not not true teachings, but true experience. I never have the feeling that I'm teaching that you should be writing notes and keeping them as notes. They should be that as we're speaking, you can watch and confirm if it is true. If it resonates in your heart, then you know, oh, whew, that just washed out a lot of stuff. I don't know. Just feels it's not there anymore in your sea. That's that swift. At the same time, it takes some time to stabilize in the understanding. Paradoxically, it takes time to discover the timeless. Yes, it, it doesn't feel like an I entity who is saying that I don't have any problems. But it's just that I, I just am, and I, I don't. Of course, things arise, but it, it's, it doesn't last for long, you know. Yes. It, it's Nothing just, lasts. Uh, Nothing lasts. Nothing lasts. Except this. And I wanted to thank you from the bottom of my the heart that doesn't know any boundaries. Actually, it's, it's just growing and growing and growing. And my love for you is just growing and growing. If if, <laughs> if it's even possible, and <laughs> and um, so very grateful. Yes, thank you. Very good. Very grateful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Is it good we talk like this? Yes. Yeah, very good. Okay. Namaste. Namaste. Um, I feel um, this isness, this presence, this beingness, and uh, it's a bit. Like in the head, this, this is not an experience, but this I feel somehow it's a little bit in the head. Mm -hmm. So I watch this action. I mean, so this isness. Let's say it's in the head. So it's limited, no? It's in the head. It's not in the neck. No, it, no, no. Not the isness is in the head. Okay. It, it it feels. I look. And experience this isness from the head. From the head. Oh, the head and is uh, okay. I okay. feel a uh, headache too. You feel headache? Yes. Yeah, okay. isness is so big. Okay. <laughs> Your head is. <laughs> so, uh, okay. Something okay. is not true here. Uh, no, not like that. It's got nothing to do with head, it's got nothing to do with torso. It's got nothing to do with legs, front or back. It's got nothing to do with the senses. It's got nothing to do with your thinking. It's got nothing to do with your who your parents were, where you were born. It's got nothing to do with any of that. And somehow, these satsangs that you are experiencing is washing away this resume that you have about yourself. To, to a kind of nothing. It is not everyone's taste, it's not everybody's taste, the way that we are looking, and yet it can be everyone's experience.
The Supreme Self wants nothing from the world. The world has nothing to give it, because the world owns nothing to give it. And something inside is quietly dissolving, disappearing. Not always quietly, okay? But dissolving, and in its place <coughs> is the unspeakable. And you know there is nothing you have done or tasted in this world that compares to it. No love, no sensation, no thing, nothing gained or imagined that can be described uh, next to it. There is no one to reject it. There is not even anyone to accept it. Can I speak like this? Perhaps this understanding will never take on evangelical proportions, you know? and that's fine. Nevertheless, everyone and every living thing is it. Whether you're from this planet or elsewhere, you have no other source than this. It gives the sense of substance and value to everything, just its expression. And yet it is beyond value. You know what I'm speaking. I can't speak more, otherwise I'm going to break down. When you come to that point, when you recognize that you are unavoidably, choicelessly, unmistakably it, all sorrows come to an end. On the surface, of course, waves, and they may carry a certain flavour, but you see, I have a feeling that I've come time to hear this from you, not to be saying this to you anymore. It's enough to just stay like this. Huh? It's enough to stay like this. Who is going to do it? Not like uh, doing. Okay, not like doing, but staying is a kind of. Uh, it's okay. You know, we can say stay like this, and there's nothing wrong. Remain like this, even better. Ah, uh, yes, maybe. Okay, okay. Stay like this. Remain like this. Uh, speaks something inside that the mind does not understand. Stay like this, remain like this. Meaning, don't give interpretation to it, don't imagine on top of it, don't uh, try to, put, don't identify. But to whom do I speak to say that? Just the, the intellect of the being, perhaps we can say that, can receive this kind of instruction. And it's not donkey work, you know, it is a joy because. There is within us capacity, tendency, urges, habit to, to, to go towards what is perishable and to somehow try to uh, make what is perishable by nature uh, to give it a kind of an, an eternal kind of uh, meaning or something. 
And these tendencies, gradually, they, they disappear. Just you're sitting here, you know. You know, you can sit right where you are right here. And don't get up, don't raise a hand, no nothing. And all that I'm saying is fulfilled in you. It's almost as though my words become an afterthought of what you see. And in fact, your grasping of this in the heart, you need not speak about it. You would not be able to conceal it. Not from me, anyway. I watch you. But I don't wait. You see, because of habit and tradition, you may say like this, you know, you may say, well, yeah, you know, so I should just stay. And for a while, I may just say, yes, stay with it, stay with it, because it matters to say this at some stage, to say, yes, stay with it. Until at a certain point, the necessity to be reminded to stay uh, collapses. Can't do it. In fact, uh, the scriptures are telling you, stay as you are. <laughs> it tells us, be as you are, stay as you are. But we don't know what the we are is. We think it's the ego. It is not the ego. The ego cannot stay at anything. Hmm? Although I, I feel um, just remaining as this in the morning, on the daytime, uh, when there is activity, I still see many. Not even two. It's okay. With the mind you see many. With the heart you just see. You cannot help it. Many is there nothing. Don't fight with many. It's okay. There's something natural about that also. But there is something here which has no number to it, not even one. When we count, you know, we say one, then two, three, four, five, one million. Nobody says zero, one, two, three. You stay at zero. Can you feel what it means or not? Yes. Good. There's no language in that zero. If you can attend to my pointings in this way, you know, a space in you, you stay there. And then the, the daily life and the activities of talking, that can continue, no trouble. We're going, what time, what day? Oh, it's today, Saturday, something. You can do all of that whilst remaining as zero, beyond even the concept about zero. Someone ask. My mind is giving me so much trouble. My 
ego is so arrogant and my life lived in this way i am not happy with it please can you help me to to reach that place that you point to and i say from the from the room of being okay okay you can come in hmm? Before you come in, leave your shoes outside. One more thing, leave your mind outside. And you say, but how can I leave my mind outside? That's the very problem I have. I can't leave them outside. I want to get rid of it. And I say, um, don't worry, it's not a big deal. All I mean by leaving your mind outside is for the short duration of my guidance with you, don't talk about the past, what you have done, where you have been, all these things. Don't mention it, and don't speak about the future. Can you agree with it? Yes. You can agree. Even the present moment, do not give it to the mind, don't interpret. Any idea you have about yourself, I ask, just suspend it, leave it aside, don't talk about yourself. Or what kind of world, what kind of life you want to live and all it, whatever dreams or aspirate, just don't speak about these things for now. Just be empty, 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 empty. Just be empty. Just for these few minutes. Don't hold on to any concept. Don't be a container for thoughts and ideas and memories. Just be empty. You can do it. It's not difficult. And the tendency to think, OK, I've done it now. OK, what's, what's next? What's the next thing? Don't touch next. Don't touch what's next. Just be, just be here. Empty, empty. No waiting, no anticipation, really empty, like you have never been before. Don't hold on to any idea about yourself, or life, or the world, or even about God. Hold on to no ideas at all, and do it now. Stay completely, and, and just pay attention just pay attention to just just what is here by itself don't create anything at all so you don't need to imagine or visualize anything just stay like you are now empty but not waiting not hoping Any thoughts that come, let them just appear. But don't uh, cling to any thought. Don't let them enter your house. Let them just go. In fact, don't have a house. Just be. So I just had to ask you to, to be like this. Empty everything, every hour. To show you how simple it is, be empty of everything. Even the, even the desire for enlightenment also. They say, don't touch anything. No desire, even the highest desire. Hold on to no desire and no judgment at all. Just be empty and pay attention. What is here? You are here, aren't you? Don't be attached to any name, any lineage.
Let me ask you just a few questions now that you are here like this. I have not asked you to suppress your senses. Just be here. If any thought comes and is trying to invite you back into some shape, uh, reject that. Stay formless, shapeless. And still you can feel the power of your own being. You are here. Now I want to ask you this question. Whatever is here, whatever is left now, this, this, which I call isness, or the what is, or awareness, does it have any shape or form? I like you to answer this thing. No, no. Is it an object? No. Is it personal? Is it a mood? Does it have an inside or outside? No. Very good. Does it have any any boundaries beyond which it is not? Can it be can it suffer from sickness or depression? Can it fade? Really? Can it fade so that if you fell asleep for half an hour and you wake up, it's diminished in power or something? It cannot fade. Does it exist because of belief? Can it be for or against anyone? You are discovering this uh, now. But where has it been all this time? Are these answers coming because you have answered before? Is it the mind? Is it a feeling? Please answer. Was it born? Be very clear in yourself. Hmm? Is it an object you are perceiving? No. Can it die? No. And finally, I am going to ask you, How near is it? How, how far from you is it? (coughs) 
Is there any separation between this what isness and yourself? Yeah? No. Therefore, I say that if these responses from you are genuine and true, that it is whatever is here, it is without form, without shape or size, it is neither inside nor outside, it is not an object, it is not person or personal, it cannot fade. It does not judge. It does not depend upon your belief. What about does it depend upon religion? That it has always been here, you say. Can it be possessed? Can it be lost? That's and then I ask, was it born? Then of course I must ask you, can it die? You say no. And finally I ask. What separates you from it? How much distance between yourself and this what is awareness? No distance. If these things are true, then your responses must all be about your own self. They must be the same as your own self. Do you wish to change your mind about any particular point? Where is the mind? Where is the mind that is rebelling against this? Therefore, I ask only that one sits with this, be confirmed in it, Acknowledge the fact of it. Enjoy it. Be it. How to be it? Are you not already it? So therefore, only real advice I can ask is that you marinate your attention in it, just to stay with it. Don't be thinking and trying to figure out. Just be with the 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 energy field, the intuitive realization of this. Just be. Not in some creative way, just be with it. And 
I say, the more you stay with this consciously, it is like you are discovering a fruit that keeps getting sweeter and sweeter every day, but never becomes oversweetened. Can it be as simple as that? If there are many roads to here, which one do you take? So you keep your attention in this way, because what we call mind or, or kind of psychological patterns or so on, they will keep coming. You see, and will feel as though they are coming to try and sabotage this understanding in you, this awakening you can say in yourself. And they can only do this if you are allow somehow that formless consciousness that you are, to go back into the shape of a person. Then the person has a history. The isness is without history. Awareness has no history. It has no future or past. Even present it doesn't have. Don't try to speak about it with anybody. Just keep marinating your attention there. Don't speak about it. Anyone. And see what happens. Because whatever happens is there already. It's in the presence of this. So let whatever play plays in the in the theatre of consciousness, it's fine. It provides the life force that is the animating power in the whole universe. Let everything dance, let everything play, including through this body also. Hmm. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And if you don't uh, divide, in fact, the self cannot be divided. You will soon see. To divide, it can only dream division. It cannot actualize division. This is why it says all this world is a play, the leila of God. And this is why it's called. Awakening, meaning to wake up out of this sleep or this dream. And the deepest part of the dream is when you don't even think you're sleeping. Sleeping means not knowing who you are. Thank you. That itself is ever present, the only thing that is ever present. It is there before questions and answers. But questions and answers must arise before it is seen. Such is the play. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for today. Mm. And 
you have been shown that which is before time. Where is its location? You see. Okay, we can have some music. Thank you. Hello. I wrote to you a few words. You wrote some. You wrote some words to me. Yes, if I don't want to miss the chance to give it to you. Okay. If this is to be my last satsang, I would come up to say thank you. Thank you, Guruji, beyond the concept of thanking you. Your love came into my heart and swirled it to look within. My being is eternally grateful for you to be the clearest, sharpest, and timeless mirror towards its essence, which is you yourself. May your love shine upon all beings and turn them into light. Om peace. Amen. Amos. It's good if you would live like every moment is your last satsang. I feel it's not so, such a bad idea. Because when we feel we have time, you know, something relaxes, which sounds not bad, it's good to be relaxed. But the kind of relaxation that becomes complacency. You understand this word? Meaning, yes, well, I got time. I have time, and uh, and you do, in fact, because if it takes another one hundred incarnations to wake up, but God does not mind. He has plenty of time. But if inside something feels, you know, no, enough. It's not just about time, but it's enough. You know, how can this magnificent life be just about suffering and you know struggle and judgments and fear? And of course you'll be right, how could it just be about that? It will be about that for a time. And even if it is about this or feels like it is with suffering and pain and so on, you must use that because Suffering and pain are spiritual growth hormones for one who is really earnest and really desiring to, you know, the richness of a 
a true life. So I like when people sometimes come and say, I, I really am I'm out of time, or I, I, I don't have any time to waste. Something inside feels very eager to say, OK, what are they going to say then? You are right, Amos, but like this, if this is to be my last satsang, I would come up to say thank you. Mm. You will only say thank you for what you have received. And what can you receive except uh, can they even say you receive yourself? We couldn't say it like that, of course. And that we have been receiving a lot of things that we have taken to be what we are. And something becomes tired. It says, No, I don't want any of those things anymore. I don't want to curse them, they're fine. But this space here is not for things. You know. If you know that, then everything I feel is going to go right with you. I don't feel even as you sleep, uh, something is is becoming more mature and more just purified because of that one, perhaps that one desire, or that one thank you, that won't go away inside your heart. Then this will be the fire that burns everything. So thank you, Amos, for that. Now I am saying thank you, yeah. and uh, and thank you for thanking. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. May your love shine upon all beings and turn them into light. Thank you. Thank you.
to 